A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to, del able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary, and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. The young men walked around in the midst of the flames, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions, and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace, and made the inside of the furnace as though a moist wind were whistling through it. The fire did not touch them at all, and caused them no pain or distress. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, Come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed. Their tunics were not harmed. And not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies, rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our ancestors, and blessed is your glorious and holy name. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne on the cherubim. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, to be sung and glorified forever. Glory and praise forever.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me, because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, We are not illegitimate children. We have one father, God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says to the, we're told to the Jews who had believed in him, but things don't go well. He says to them, you will be, the truth will make you free. And this uh, to them is a controversial uh, utterance because they, as they tell him indignantly, are children of Abraham, members of the chosen people. So they are most certainly not slaves. And he goes on to talk about slavery to sin. Anyone who sins, who commits sin, is a slave to sin. But this idea of what freedom means and what freedom is, is very much uh, not limited to uh, Jesus' day. It's a question that we face in our own lives and in our own society, even today. The Christian understand, understanding of freedom is countercultural, shall we say. The Christian understanding of what it means to be free is based on an understanding that the entire universe and everything, and we can say everyone in it, has been created out of love by a loving God. And it is ultimately destined for unity and union with that God. And so, given that we in our lives as part of that creation have a purpose given to us by God, union with God, unity with one another through that union, our freedom flows from following most closely the path and making the choices that lead us towards that ultimate goal, that goal for which we ourselves were created. So obedience to God is not like obedience to an external authority. We all uh, in our own individual lives in various and different ways, uh, sometimes rub up against external authority telling us what to do. And in our culture, that is very much held up as a noble virtue for the most part. But in the Christian understanding of the world, the universe, and humanity, uh, obedience to God is obedience to our own purpose in life. It's obedience to the very meaning of our existence. We were made by love, we were made for love, and we're journeying towards ever deeper and greater love. A love that gives itself away, not for its own sake, but for the sake of others. And so obedience to the Lord is true freedom for us as Christians, but as we believe indeed for everyone on this earth. 